Okay, I am very happy to welcome you all uh, today. Uh, Woman Waiter and ja our uh, our team uh, from Jamia. We are really thankful for them to organizing um, this initiative of bringing knowledge to students at this time. Uh, I'm sure uh, Woman Waiter and the combined initiative by the college on psycho socio economic well being during covid 19 will be a great uh, help so i'm really thankful for jamia hamdard college for uh, thinking of such a great initiative with us and i'm thankful to um, you know to our co-host jeanath ma'am for uh, you know for coming forward and taking this in such a great way um, with this, I would like to first introduce our moderator for the session. So uh, we have uh, with us um, Paruma Bhattacharya ji. Uh, she is a multifaceted personality with a various expertise, a woman and the child rights activist, journalist, a distinguished theater artist, a classical vocalist, a prof 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 uh, and a writer, are some of the feature in her cap. She is currently heading media division of Nobel Peace uh, creator uh, Kailash Satyarthiji and the found and his foundation. So welcome, Paroma. And uh, today we have with us Abhijit Dutt sir. A very special welcome to Abhijit Dutt sir, and thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Um, I'm. Abhijit sir has been a mentor and um, a supporter for Women Waiter, the time when we incorporated women, which is there to support women. Sir was our first jury when we launched and created the Aisha Books of Record by bringing 100 women on one stage to speak in one minute. And I'm really thankful that we are blessed to have his support always. So. Um, with this, I would request uh, Paroma to take things forward. Please, Paroma, over to Thank you, Tripti. Thank you for this uh, opportunity. Uh, without wasting much time, I would, uh, you know, uh, there is no introduction required. And I think Tripti has already talked about Mr. Dutt, uh, a theater director, an actor, and a distinguished filmmaker and chief motivator and above all for all of us, a born artist. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Dutt, to take out time and speaking to all of us today in this very special session. Thank you very much, Parma, for having me. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I would just like to, you know, start off with the conversation. Uh, Mr. Dutt, we are just, you know, going through this unprecedented humanitarian crisis right now, which uh, nobody has seen so far. And, uh, you know, how does an artist, how does an artist remain creative? And how does uh, this whole sense of fear, loneliness affect its creation at these times? We would really like to hear from you. Uh, Parma, to start with, I think uh, it'll be wrong to call myself an artist because I don't know what that is. I am an art worker, indeed. Uh, I work in similar areas like you. I am very proud to have launched the child line with NHRC and UNICEF. NHRC, after a protracted snooze and an ill-afforded sleep for our civilization, has woken up now and has started asking questions about why the migrants have been dealt with in this manner. Uh, 400 BC, Pericles says, if you're not interested in politics, don't worry, politics will be interested in you. <laughs> and that's literally what is happening now. Even those who are uninterested have been justified. When the railway <laughs> tells us that there have been over 80 deaths in the last 15 days. And moments after that, the railways minister comes and says, no one has so much as even been uncomfortable in this journey. Uh, you wonder. Yesterday was a very interesting uh, headline. 
Times of India was uh, carrying out the hatchet job for the PR for the government. And there was a headline which says, uh, six decades work, all changed in six years. And it proceeded to ghostwrite an article from purportedly Mr. Amit Shah about how Mr. Modi has uh, lifted our productivity and our economic standpoint and our economic vision and so on. But yesterday, it also told us that after one month of lockdown, our first quarter GDP has been 3.1%. It is difficult to come to terms with these opposites. As far as being locked away, it's not really so bad. I mean, uh, we've, we've all been, uh, we've all had times and we've said, I wish. I wanted to read so much, I haven't got a chance to. I wanted to write so much, I haven't had a chance to. But what is definitely awakening every one of us and wanting us to, to make our voices be heard is what's happening in the larger context in our country. The treatment of activists, how during this period they are being locked away. Dear friends of mine, including Omar, have been locked away under UAP. I mean, a pregnant girl locked away. Pinjra Thor activists locked away. And at a time when we are supposed to have been locked down with our relatives, friends, immediate family and nothing else. These are obviously prime material to, to, to shout out on, to write on, to, 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 to act on, but, well, there's been only one glimmer of hope for me that my daughter at this time has also performed in this uh, web series called Pata Lok, and she has been noticed. So that has been a silver lining for me personally. Besides that, it's really, really dour times for a month. Right. If I can call you that. Right. If I say Paruma instead of Ms. Bhattacharya. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, this is a difficult time and we are all looking for some or the other hope. But uh, it's a very interesting part of uh, you, you. You talked about more reading. You talked about, you know, the new experiments that we can make. You know, years back, you and Shamanan Jalan, you both decided to bring Mahashweta Devi's, you know, Hazar Chaurasi Ki Ma live on stage from a novel to a uh, stage live production. And that was an experiment that a uh, lot of people liked and uh, Mahashweta Devi herself was stumped that how could those characters come so live. Uh, do you think that when you talk about theater in the new era, we would see an online productions or things like that digitally? Do you think, do you think that digital era is on its way uh, as far as theater is concerned? Well, you know, theater has been dying, uh, you would know, has been dying for the last 2000 years. And it is still redefining itself because the here and the nowness of theater cannot be changed with anything else. It was remarkable to hear that Shujit's latest film is going to come on in Amazon Prime. Now that is an amazing collaboration and definitely shows a way ahead, but theater, I don't know. There is one fabulous play which is uh, right on right now on Zoom. It's called, uh, what do we have to talk about? It is a play that's been happening for some time and they've just done their new version. After there have been some deaths in the family, there are two people who have gone in for getting cured and they're all New York based. That's the only play that I have seen of current times being done on Zoom on the current medium, so to say. 
I don't know. I think theater will find its way back in again. I don't know how. I don't see audience sitting next to each other. But I am sure it will find its way back again into relevance. Right. right. It will surely find its way again. As, as we say, there is always some hope. Um, uh, can, I, can I take a moment to talk please, about... Please do. Uh, please do. Hazat Churasi Ki Ma. I read the novel, Hazat Churasi Ma, and uh, I asked Shomik Bondapadhyay, who is a critic, who is a, a dramaturg, who is a, a resource and intellectual. I asked him that, uh, can you possibly ask Marsh Tadi? So he laughed at me and he said, you really think we could do it? So I said, you know, I've actually written out two scenes. Would you like to hear it? He said, yes, I would. I'd written it in Bangla. So I read those two scenes and Shomik Das didn't say a word. Uh, later, I heard from Mahashitadi that he had asked her. She expressed an interest to meet me. By which time Sham and I had talked to each other. Shamanand is no more. He's passed away a few years ago. And he was a dear friend and a super theater actor and director. Uh, I was then working with Padatik, his group. And Shamanan said, look, why don't you do it in Hindi? It'll have a far wider audience. Because after all, what are we talking about? This is the first time that the Naxalite issue is going to be talked on stage. So we went to Maharshitabi. And she heard us out. And... Uh, I was fortunate in that uh, I played sitar and helped with the lights in her husband's last production on the last night before he died. That is Bijan Bhattacharya's play. And uh, that being my introduction, I was in clothes which were uh, modern. I did not change that. I was, my hair was, I think, a little stylish. And I thought all of it was against what Moshe Zadji stood for, but she liked what I stood for, apparently. Later I discovered. After two meetings, she said, write it, do it. I don't believe it can be done on stage, but I will exercise my prerogative after it's produced. If it doesn't work, I have the last word. We did the show in a theater called Gyan Manch, which was just being opened. Uh, and at the end of the show, she never came backstage. Everybody came back to tell us how good it was, but she never did. So I went out and there in the auditorium, she was sitting quiet without a word. Sham and I went and sat down next to her, wordlessly. She shook her head. I said, oh, no. So it didn't work. She shook her head and said, I didn't believe it could be done on stage. It was wonderful. And from then on, uh, we did many shows of the play, all over the country, actually. And I can always say that it was one of the greatest experiments and may this lockdown bring such uh, beautiful experiments also. Thank you, Parama. Thank you. Hope. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> you have been a, a filmmaker and, uh, you know, these OTT platforms that I see right now, uh, you know, it is giving opportunities to a lot of filmmakers who never thought that this could, uh, you could, you know, uh, they could get a space in a big screen, but now they are being, you know, seen up in these platforms. As a filmmaker, do you think it's in positive change or it's like a loss to the film industry? How, how, do you, how do you look at it? When Kodak went out of business, we all viewed the fact that film was going out and digital was in. But today, 
we see scenes being shot with no lights whatsoever, with just existing lights, which was unbelievable in film. I think we cannot deny the fact that time moves on and technology imbues this new art form. Cinema is what? Just 150 years old. It's a new form. Uh, so I think it's still going through the evolution and transition. And greater strength to the filmmaker with the OTT platforms. I think it gives them far greater freedom. It gives the actor more time to settle into their character, to try things. And I mean, as an actor in uh, the OTT, I have been surprised by the kind of leeway you would get. Uh, of course, you are pushed a little on time, but you have far greater space than in cinema. And all the other doodas, that is the vanity van and the, and the, and the crews and the way they handle it is all like a film. So greater strength, I think. I think it allows us a greater opportunity. But similarly, I think the theater experience, uh, theater I mean as in the cinema theater, cinema. that experience is, I think, uh, unparalleled. You never have that on the OTT. Yeah. It's marvelous to settle down and to have something while watching or get completely caught up in it, sit up, and then you suddenly realize, oh, oh, my ice cream is melting. But uh, this theater, meaning the cinema theater, is an experience. That darkness, that island that you're in, where you can shed tears without getting concerned about the person next to you watching you, that is an experience. Absolutely. I think that's an experience uh... So the theater is there for so many years uh, and the film theater is there for so many years. Uh, I have a small question, you know, uh, as far as uh, cinema is concerned, even uh, the cinema which was parallel and offbeat many years before is suddenly seen a transition to becoming the mainstream and, you know, people are liking that kind of movies. Uh, how do you look at this change? You know, do you see it positive? Why did this change happen? Did, did, has the has the audience suddenly changed, or uh, you know, the ability of taking content has become different? How do you look at this change? Parma, now I'll put myself in the actor's shoes and say, "Hey, I love it. I love it because suddenly they're not just looking for the chocolate face. They're not just looking for established faces." but they're looking for actors who fill that role, which is remarkable to start with. I think this whole business of the multi-screen um, uh, um, projections, that changed the game. The game became more led by content. Content became the king. I mean, could you imagine Shujit's film um, uh, oh Dan. before Madras Cafe ah, damn where uh, Ayushman uh, acts for the first time you see him Vicky Donor Vicky Donor would you yeah. imagine a Vicky Donor earlier in cinema I would I would really hesitate to say maybe not. As a matter of fact, you know, their producers walked out saying that we will never get our monies back. So John came in to sustain the production. Once they finished the film, they sold it back to the same producers who stood to make a lot of money. And from that, they plowed it back into Madras Cafe, where again, they hadn't expected to make money, but they did hand over fist again. So I think this definitely shows us that content is gradually becoming the king and what was at one time seen as parallel cinema is now right here and here to stay. Right, right. 
the conversation is in going and uh, before we uh, you know move ahead i take this opportunity to uh, thank women awaiter uh, nipper institute and jamia institute for bringing up this initiative because this is the only source of energy among this uh, you know this lockdown series that we all are facing at the same time so thank you all for bringing this in uh, together i'll uh, continue my conversation mr dat sorry for if i can just add to it i'm deeply deeply grateful thank you ever so much please continue yeah. Uh, thank you so i'll just uh, you know take some more time and you know build up the conversation as i see a lot of viewers uh, looking at us <clears throat> you know um, mr dat there has been a lot talking about the kind of content that people and artists and you know uh, content writers are bringing in together especially during this lockdown they are bringing these hundreds of films uh, you know short films documentaries are releasing almost you know every now and then what would be your you know that one tip uh, to uh, you know in engaging the right kind of content you know uh, sometimes too harsh content works out well sometimes it doesn't so for all these budding writers do you have any suggestions advice on things that they need to concentrate on i think to go deep within themselves uh and encounter truth in whatever way it be now uh i don't know maybe i'm sorry just a moment uh just maybe i'm so sorry yeah as i was saying banksy says that he hates being at home. his wife hates him being at home because he's doing things around home and he's done this marvelous set of drawings of mice inside his toilet now we would say that in the unity of things toilet I, you don't want to draw about your toilet now do you but it makes for great art so i think we cannot lay down any strict rule saying this is not content which is acceptable just like we were talking about wiki donor or madras cafe i mean uh, it's content that the director wanted to talk about juhi the writer discovered her way of getting to the script of bringing out what she was and got across to the audience we don't really know where we get across to the audience and make a connect like we say in theater i mean you would be familiar with this there is only the first night that will tell you whether it really works or not uh, there was a play called devils of ludon and at rehearsal once apurna sen came and she saw the play and she was so struck by it hey i took it to stage you wouldn't believe it i was acting in it too and i had many of us actors going into the audience i met this gentleman who was fast asleep he was snoring i decided after that first night to cut down 1 hour 20 minutes of that play can you imagine and we cut it down and then the play started working a bit but it never had that experience which reena uh, which apurna sen had while inside that small rehearsal space similarly we took this play to russia it was called uh, it was taking coal to newcastle literally a play written by an indian called pushkin's last poem pushkin's wife fell in love with the tsar or the tsar fell in love with her and uh, finally there was a duel that was set up where pushkin was killed now this is a bit of a gray area for russians because it's not saying very nice things when we took it and we did it 
We did it in Moscow. We got a standing ovation, but Moscow is a bit of a cold place. So our two shows there, fair enough. Then we got to Petersburg. And I went to this theater and I saw the theater. It was a mammoth theater with a huge orchestra pit. And I said, my play is going to die here. It's going to have that same experience as the Devils of Luzon. So I said, I'm sorry, but I can't do it here. She said, this is a part of the India festival in Russia. There is nothing I can do. The theater has been hired by the Indian embassy. So I said, what do we do? Give me a solution. She said, I don't know. So I said, all right, let's use the curtain of the stage as my backdrop. And please block the orchestra pit and we'll do the play on top of the orchestra pit. So we are right next to the audience. Would you believe it? By the clock, there was a 12 minute standing applause in our first show at Petersburg. I mean, we would go off stage and you know, the European tradition is that you, the actors come back on stage every time and the applause carries on. So my actors who were on the other side of the wings, they would say, what do we do now? So I'd say, come on in. And we'd go in again and take a bow and go out and the applause continued. So, you know, uh, it's, it's you discover while doing work that what is it that really gets going with the audience? And sometimes you try your best and it doesn't work. Selavi. Right. Very nice. I mean, uh, these are experiences that are so lovely to hear. Uh, while we conclude to move towards the conclusion of the session, uh, I'll just round up. If there are any questions that you would like to ask him, we can take a couple of questions. Uh, so anybody for any question? Hari Om. Till now, we haven't received any question. If if someone have a question, please uh, uh, post your questions to Miss Paromaji. She will, uh, she's ready to take your questions one by one. Paroma, there don't seem to be any questions. Can I just add a little more? Sure, please do, please, please. So, my point is, what do young people do today? Because they are the most unrepresented in media. Right. You don't find them on television screens coming up and giving their points of view. But I definitely feel that they are the ones whose voices must be heard. There is great hope in art making an expression, in bringing about some form of change or the other. And to keep that hope going, to make statements and work that they feel can make a difference, can make a statement, can put up questions. For in debate and dissidence, there is democratic movement and movement forward for our country. We are a young country, we need it. Absolutely. We are a young country and we need it. We need uh, motivation also. We need people to pat our back also. And we really need that space to talk about ourselves. And I'll just conclude with one last question to Mr. Dutt. And uh, uh, you know, you have been, you have tasted the fruits of, you know, you, you have worked internationally as well. And I think that aspect is something that uh, we could just, you know, uh, explore a little more. 
uh, our Indian films, uh, you know, uh, are in a position to to cater to the world audience. There is a specific kind of things, films that needs for you know getting it acclaimed internationally. So, is is there any thoughts that you have of of that? This is a big one. This is a huge one because we could spend a few hours talking about this. You know, there is, of course, that huge American lobby that says that uh, only films that entertain us are films that are recognizable and can be shown world over. However, in the fact that even Shujit's latest film is being translated into 16 different languages, even as we speak, Gulabo is going to be in 16 or 24 different languages all over the world. <laughs> uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And I definitely think we have an opportunity. Mm. Hello, Ankur. We have an opportunity mm. in being recognized. Mm. I'm sorry. Mm. sorry. Someone's talking. Yeah, I would request you to please mute yourself as Sor is going speaking, uh, please. Yeah. Sorry. So as I was saying, I definitely think now that we are a more content-led creation factory, we should have our work being seen more and more. And we will come into our own just like Korean cinema or Iranian cinema has got a recognition and has a seat in the world cinema, we do well, I am certain. I, uh, I would like to, you know, share one, I would like to ask one question, sir. Like everyone, you know, uh, always after you watch so many movies, so many, um, you know, uh, things coming up, Netflix, um, different kind of uh, movies coming in. Definitely the scope for uh, artists has increased. Definitely everyone is looking for, we lost Irfan Khan this year, um, Mr. Kapoor. I think uh, when we lost Mr. Khan, one thing which came to our mind was that he was a real actor. It was not about the face, but it was about his acting. Whatever he was wearing hardly mattered. He, he acted as a villager, he acted in different form, but we loved watching it. And that's what we can see the trend. I've been seeing a lot of series and you can see it's all about how intense the actor is. It's not about the look, it's not about the dressing style. It's just the real talent. And I think my question is related to this. Now, since everyone wishes to um, get into the stream, um, they may at a different part of their life, maybe at different ages want to do this. How easy it is to get into this. Like someone in finance wants to get into media, someone in, um, you know, a doctor wants to get into media. Is there an age bar or you can still explore? And if we can give two tips, because there are a lot of our, you know, audience who aspire to be in media at different ages. So it will be really great. If I may, I, uh... I had a great amount of opportunities. The first film I ever did was in 79 uh, with M.S. Satyu. It was actually Anil Kapoor's first film called Kaha Kaha Se Guzar Gaya. And uh, subsequently, I got a few opportunities and I didn't want to do anything. In 95, I did a whole bunch of films. I did six films actually. Uh, Bong Connection, Bo Barracks Forever, Kama Sutra, Fire, etc. And I said, that's it. I've had my fill. I do not want to do any more. Now, Bollywood was a bad name then. Uh, times changed. And uh, 10 years ago, 29, uh, 2009, I think, uh, No One Kill Jessica happened. And uh, I liked what happened with that film. I liked acting in it. I got my space in it. And I suddenly found that people were sending me scripts, people were coming across, and it was this whole phenomena of the casting director 
that happened in our films. Before that, it was more a director producer led casting. But now the casting director was looking for real faces. I want somebody who has started a movement. I think, I think Tritti is somebody who looks right for it. The casting director finds you. So I think everybody has an opportunity. But of course, the trained actor has a little bit more of an advantage. If, uh, if the trained actor is working on his or her voice and body and stuff like that, then I think they have a better opportunity. That's all. Just a question of shades. Thanks, but sir. the so day of the chocolate hero, thankfully, <laughs> is over. <laughs> I hope. Yeah. Can I ask for Uma? Would, you, would she like to end uh, this session? And uh, yes. yeah. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, we are concluding this session. It was very interesting and all these experiences, Mr. Dutt is always inspiring. And in this forum, let, let me congratulate you for all the good you've done and all the time that you have inspired us at the silver screen of the screen. And thank you, Tripti, for making this happen and making this session so powerful. Thank you so much, everyone.